What's up guys and welcome back to another brand new episode of Shark Bites. So this is just a really super quick one from me today. I'm hoping to get Shark Bites back up and running again pretty soon. So do start getting ready for some regular Shark Bites episodes again. They're every Sunday at 9 p.m. just in case you were wondering. Anyway, I've had so many people send me this particular video over the last few weeks. I've lost track of the amount of people that have sent it to me. So I thought it would probably be a good idea for me to do a little bit of a rundown on it. If you haven't seen the video or the story around it, then and I'll break it down really quickly for you. A young lad, Cameron Robbins, was on a sunset cruise in the Bahamas a few weeks ago celebrating his high school graduation with a few friends. For some reason, those friends had dared him to jump off the moving boat into the water. He's ended up being filmed in the water as he drifts away into the darkness, and as of making this video, the authorities haven't found his body. I believe that they called off the search not that long ago, so sadly, it looks like Cameron has unfortunately lost his life. But what seems to have sparked some fierce debate online is whether a shark is visible in the water next to Cameron right at the start of the video. People are furiously arguing about this online, like seriously, furiously arguing. So I'll play you a little bit of the clip and you can have a look for yourselves initially. This kid fucking jumped off! Oh my fucking god! Oh, oh, oh bye bye! Oh. Right, okay, did you see anything? Let's have a look together. So the section of the video in question is right here in the first four seconds. It's insanely low quality and blurry. So straight off the bat here, it's gonna be virtually impossible to prove this one way or another. If we slow it down though, this here is what people are saying is a shark. We see it for just a moment before the guy filming pans over to the left briefly before filming the water again. By which point Cameron can be seen there turning and swimming in the opposite direction to the life ring, which has been thrown into the water to help him. And then with the currents heading one way and the boat heading the other way, Cameron disappears from view. So let's Let's for a second presume, and I say that very carefully there, presume that this is a shark. If we compare the size of it to the size of the life ring that's also in the frame briefly, it doesn't look like a very big shark. Life rings are about 25 to 30 inches in diameter, so if that is a shark, it's definitely not a big one. Based on the fact that both objects are around the surface of the water, we're talking maybe four or five feet long. Now, don't get me wrong, four or five feet long in shark terms is still big enough to cause some damage. Normally, I'd say any shark longer than around six feet in length is perfectly capable of causing serious damage to your body if it were to bite you. So we're not too far away from that length. So let's take into account a few other factors now. The boat was sailing around the Bahamas, which is an area where sharks are well and truly protected. This means that shark populations are actually doing pretty well in that region, so much so that they've dubbed the Bahamas the shark diving capital of the world. The Bahamas has a bunch of different shark species that call its waters home. They've got reef sharks, bull sharks, tiger sharks, hammerheads. I'm pretty sure there's over 40 different shark species that live in the Bahamas. But there's of course people online that are saying that whatever this thing is in the water is a great white shark and I think there were some other people that were saying it was an oceanic white tip. So based on the size of the object in the video, it's definitely not a great white shark. That alongside the fact that seeing a great white shark in the Bahamas would be exceptionally rare. The waters are just too warm there for them. And with the oceanic white tip suggestion, yeah, it's slightly more likely than a great white shark, but in the Bahamas, you're almost always only ever going to see oceanic white tips off Cat Island. And Cat Island is way far off from where this sunset cruise goes to, so it's not an oceanic white tip. But the Bahamas is home to loads of different shark species, so it could have been any one of the smaller to medium-sized sharks that inhabit those waters. Another factor that we've got to consider here, though, is the fact that this was nighttime or just after sunset. As we've learned here on Shark Bites before, sharks are crepuscular and nocturnal hunters, which means they hunt at dawn and dusk for their prey or they hunt for them during the night. This is a pretty big factor that increases your chances of encountering a shark in a situation like this. And then our final factor that we've got to consider here is the splash. After Cameron has jumped into the water, he's probably made a big old splash. And then that life ring being thrown in, that's also going to make a splash. Sharks are pretty inquisitive animals, so the sound of a splash in the water is likely to bring them in for a closer look. If you're after the reasoning behind that, splashing is generally a noise that's made by injured prey species for sharks, so it's easily capable of bringing one closer in. The thing for me though here is that it happens really quickly, like almost immediately. So if that is a shark, it would have pretty much had to have been immediately underneath the boat as it was cruising along. 
Again, not impossible. So those are your points there for this potentially being a shark. Now I'm gonna talk you through some of the points as to why it might not be a shark. The company that runs this Sunset Cruise Tour is called Blackbeard's Revenge. It's a pirate themed cruise company that offers a bunch of different at sea experiences. Generally they're party themed and involve a fair amount of drinking. The cruise that Cameron and his high school cohort were on was being reported as being the Sunset Cruise. They do offer two forms of nighttime cruise. It's the Sunset Cruise and then the bootleggers and barrels party cruise or something like that. So realistically, Cameron could have been on either one of those. And both of those cruises tend to run between two to three hours long and stick around Nassau Island itself. The thing about Nassau Island though is that this is the tourist hotspot destination when you go to the Bahamas. And marine life in Nassau isn't as well populated as it is in other parts of the Bahamas. So your chances of encountering different shark species, particularly around Nassau, are probably limited to a few nurse sharks, maybe some Caribbean reef sharks. They might also get the occasional bull shark perhaps following fishermen in and hoping to get some scraps but realistically those are the three sharks that you're going to see around Nassau. But the thing is you're not going to see them in huge huge numbers here. The next factor is that generally in areas where there are lots of boats like in Nassau and the surrounding waters sharks are actually pretty timid. Boats are really really noisy things under the water and sound can travel an incredibly long way under the waves. If you've ever been snorkeling and had your ears under the water and a boat's gone past you'll know what I mean. Sound can travel really, really far. And that sound of a boat engine is a pretty scary noise for most shark species. It's definitely enough to deter them from an area. Looking back at the video again then, some people on this side of the argument have been saying the thing that appears in the water is actually a white cap from the wake of a boat. So depending on how the waves were that evening and which direction the boat was sailing into, this could quite easily be a white cap. But I don't think it is. I'm gonna give you my answer here. I actually think on all balance of probability that this is a shark. Like I said before, it's not a big one, but I think it could be a shark. One thing that I've left out so far, but it's a really important thing we have to consider is local knowledge. I've seen a few reports that have said that when Cameron jumped overboard, they were not too far away from a place called Athol Island. Athol Island is known to be a bit more of a sharky place compared to other parts of Nassau. So you're much more likely to encounter a shark here. I've heard stories from local boat captains in the area that people are taking out tourists to this area for snorkeling trips and then are chumming the water to draw the sharks in. Again, those are just things that I've heard. I can't actually provide any evidence of that for you. Although there was a shark attack, I think back in 2017, where a woman was severely injured by a shark while she was snorkeling at Athol Island. There have also been other stories circulating over the years from the Bahamas that tour operators like this one have been throwing food scraps overboard. And when you start doing that, these animals aren't stupid. They will begin to associate boats with an easy meal. I of course can't confirm whether Blackbeard's Revenge as a company has been doing this as obviously I wasn't there and I've never worked for them. I imagine they'll say they don't and that they've never done it, but I know this has been going on with different tour operators in the Bahamas for many years. So I think that a shark has been following the boat already, heard the splash from Cameron and the life ring and has come in to investigate. In this section of the video here, you can see Cameron turning and it looks like he's swimming away from the life ring. Admittedly in the confusion of what's just happened and when you're in the water at night, it's entirely plausible that he's just disorientated and doesn't know which way to swim. I'm not sure also if he'd even be able to see the thing in the water from the angle that he's at, especially in the dark. That is unless a fin has broken the surface while the camera is pointed away for those few seconds. So without those few few seconds we won't know for sure if it did break the surface enough for Cameron to see what it was and then to swim in the opposite direction. Now there's been another section of people online claiming that in this part of the video here you can see Cameron being bitten by a shark which I think is absolute nonsense. They're saying here you can see the head of a shark come out of the water and bite Cameron on the legs before he disappears. For me no way. That's simply his legs kicking as he swims, and it's the back of his leg that breaks the surface of the water. Based on the video footage we have here, like I said before, it's going to be pretty much impossible to prove this either way, unless someone else was filming from another angle. But I do think what we're seeing here is a small reef shark. My best bet, based on the location and the size of it, is a Caribbean reef shark. But I think it's incredibly unlikely that we're seeing the shark that we saw in the first four seconds then bite him later in the video. If a shark's interested, it's going to scope out whatever it's interested in for a while before deciding to make a move. It's not going to have bitten him that quickly. So if that is a shark that we're seeing right at the start of the video, I don't think it's a shark that's gone on to bite Cameron. For me, it looks too small and in my opinion, wouldn't have really been that interested other than investigating the splash. This isn't to say that Cameron wasn't bitten or killed by a shark, by the way. It's entirely possible that that could have happened at some point in the night. 
You're alone, in the dark, in the water, in a place where sharks are regularly seen. If he has gone on to have been killed by a shark, I think it's more likely he's been killed by a bull shark, unfortunately, as opposed to the one that we might be seeing in this video. And the fact that they haven't found his body and they've called off the search, this generally points towards sharks playing a role at some point. I've got one major doubt though that's still playing on my mind. And when I watch the video back, I think about this every single time and it makes me still feel a bit unsure. And that is, if this was actually a shark and we can all see it in the video, how has no one else there that night seen it? Based on the angles, i.e. looking down into the water, everyone who was there that night on that side of the boat has the best possible view to see the shark. And if it's obviously a shark, then you would think at some point during the video, we might hear someone scream the words shark. It's a pretty standard reaction. But not one person in the video, at least that I can hear anyway, says anything about a shark. I know there's a few TikTok whizzers out there at the moment that are separating bits of the audio and claiming that they can hear someone in the background say shark, but I've listened to all of those videos and I definitely can't hear it. That does strike me as a little bit odd and even though I think it might be a shark and the relative probability that it is a shark is quite high, there's still that little bit of doubt. So I'm not 100% certain. I just wanted to leave you all with that thought there and to keep yourselves questioning as to what you're watching and what you're hearing in that video clip. All in all, this is a really tragic event to have happened and my thoughts go out to Cameron's family right now who must be absolutely distraught. There are lessons that we can learn from this though, guys. Please, please do not jump off a moving boat during the night. It's a really, really dangerous situation to find yourselves in. Only 25% of people who go overboard end up surviving. So that's a big percentage of people that don't survive. The fact that his friends supposedly dared him to do it shows you that they probably weren't very good friends at all. Also, please do remember guys, this is all conjecture at the moment. We have no proof or evidence that Cameron was killed by sharks. People who are lost at sea and also people who've had a drink are way more likely to drown first or die of hypothermia before anything like a shark attack. Incidents with sharks Sharks are extremely rare, but as soon as something like this comes up, the media loves to scream shark attack. Because the media love reporting on it so much, it might make you think that this is something that happens all the time and is a regular occurrence, but trust me, it really isn't. You're still far more likely to be killed by a whole host of other things than you are by a shark. I'm super interested to hear all of your thoughts on this one though, so please do let me know what you think below in the comments. Was this a shark or was it something else? If you're still keen to watch a few more dicey interactions with sharks though, make sure you click on this video right here where you can watch me reacting to real shark attacks. It's got a shark attack there from a reef shark that is absolutely wild, so give it a watch.